In this video, you'll learn how society will cope when we all start living longer. The average human lifespan has steadily increased over the last two centuries, from 29 in the early 19th century to about 70 today. As technological and scientific advances are being recorded, this trend is likely to increase in the future. Yet if we all live longer, of course, there will be a lot of social impact. The global population will grow, and there will be older people who need more care than ever before, and a large workforce will face economic hardship. How will we compete? In the following chapters, we realize that our worst fears about this new world are largely wrong. Although we will all survive into old age, society will have to compete and thrive. In these chapters you'll discover why the human to live to 1000 may already live among us. Why do we have to compete with our 50-year-old younger brother, Anne? How can you address genes? Throughout history, human beings have tried to understand and overcome death and age. What sets humans apart from animals? Most would say that this is the consciousness that we are going to die one day. This knowledge of our destiny and the movement to change that has occupied human thought for thousands of years. Death was considered by the ancients as a punishment from the gods for the rebellion or immorality of human beings. In ancient Greece, it was believed that Zeus avenged our death, sickness, and suffering by accepting the gift of fire from Zeus Prometheus. Our forefathers wasted a lot of time in betraying this destiny. Among the ancient and antiquated civilizations, there was a tendency to slow down or stop the aging process. For example, although alchemy was known to convert 20 metals into gold, alchemists were also committed to nectar and nectar, which could prolong our lives. Yet despite their efforts to overcome death, our forefathers also knew that eternity does not have to be eternal. An excellent example of this can be found in Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Gliver visits the land of Lugnag, where a small minority, called the Struldbrugs, is born immortal. At first, Gulliver was happy with the fact, but then slowly realized it was a curse. Struldbrugs enjoy amazing youth, but as they get older, their health deteriorates as they lose their teeth and hair, and are unable to speak. They become more and more isolated from society. So our forefathers wanted immortality, but as a result, they were afraid to compromise their health. In the next chapter, we will look at how modern science is dealing with this problem, in preventing aging and keeping us mostly healthy. New technology will advance not only dramatically, but also in our lives and our health. Most of us want to live a long life, but most of us don't want to do that in pain or weakness. Luckily, modern science is finding ways to overcome this difficulty by helping us live longer and healthier lives. New medical technology is even enabling us to treat diseases that we have not been able to cure before. Tissue engineering is one of these achievements. In 2008, Claudia Costello survived tuberculosis, shortly after the left branch of her left pipe fell off. Later, he ran out of air in his left lung. Previously, the only way to reduce the damage was to remove the entire left lung, an operation that increased the risk of death. However, Claudia received a new treatment, in which stem cells were taken from her bones to a seated donation window, after which her body was transplanted. The procedure was successful, and after a few weeks, his lungs regained their full potential. Two months later, she was dancing in Ibiza. Recovery is another new clinical wonder. We notice this in nature when a lizard loses a leg and marvelously becomes another. Researchers are presently starting to imitate this cycle for people. At the point when persistent Deepak Kulkarni inadvertently removes the tip of her finger, it is plunged in another sort of material called extracellular matrix, ECM, which prevents scarring and animates tissue development. Seven weeks after treatment, her finger had become back to its typical size. Progress in genomics will likewise help us by making screening and treatment of diseases more effective. The sequencing of human genomes, for instance, is getting quicker and more moderate. With admittance to somebody's whole genome, we can customize malignant growth and HIV treatments, making them more powerful. We're entering when researchers can prevent illnesses and help our bodies recover. In the years to come, a significant number of us will appreciate an undeniably more wonderful and long life. However, on the off chance that we accomplish stretched, solid life expectancies, is this consistently something to be thankful for? We'll find out in the next chapter. A significant number of the normal good issues with expanding human existence ranges are fake. Advances in science and medication have been important to such an extent that it's been proposed that the first of us to live to 1000 has just been conceived. 
Be that as it may, as amazing as this advancement is, shouldn't something be said about the ethical implications? Is this something we ought to energize? Is living longer fundamentally better? Notwithstanding what the pundits may say, it is. Scientist Leon R. Cass sets that significantly expanded life expectancies are contrary to human instinct. He contends that on the off chance that we lived longer, we would lose interest throughout everyday life and battle to discover meaning. Definitely, it's our approaching passing that furnishes our lives with reason. Be that as it may, having an all-inclusive, solid life expectancy won't make us less human. For instance, in 1850 future was around 42. It would along these lines be crazy to say that we used to be more human essentially in light of the fact that we had a more strong dread of kicking the bucket sooner. Truth be told, people are strikingly skilled at adapting to change, and expanded life expectancies are only a type of progress. Another issue with expanding our lives is that it's a helpless utilization of assets. However, this is false. Dr. Audrey Chapman of the Connecticut Health Center says that it's just shameless to put resources into costly lifespan upgrade advances and maturing research while those in agricultural nations are kicking the bucket youthful from effectively treatable illnesses. The difficulty is, this view wrongly expects an either slash or circumstance and doesn't perceive the potential well-being focal points this examination could offer less fortunate networks. There are different variables that add to treachery and disparity. Maturing research is anything but a huge piece of any well-off country spending plan, and singling it out as improper appears to be outlandish. We needn't become critical about our future maturing population, yet what will it really resemble? Expanded life expectancies will prompt populist development, yet the effect may not be as large as we might suspect. It appears to be inescapable that if a similar number of individuals keep on being conceived while our life expectancies increment, the world will before long get packed with individuals. As indicated by many, this development will be gigantic, prompting an absence of assets and hazardous natural repercussions. However, is this valid? In reality, the impact of long lives on populist development isn't as large as you would anticipate. Specialists at the University of Chicago made a model to gauge the development of populaces around the planet, accepting richness rates stayed at the present levels. Utilizing information from Sweden, they found that regardless of whether Swedes quit maturing totally, the Swedish populace would just increment by 22% throughout 100 years. Also, a bigger, more seasoned populace won't really mean a shortage of assets, nor damagingly affect the climate. In his 1968 book, The Population Bomb, Stanford teacher Paul Ehrlich anticipated that as we moved toward the 1970s, countless individuals would keep from need from food. The inverse happened. The everyday calorie consumption per capita has been expanding everywhere in the world from that point forward and is anticipated to keep crawling up, in spite of the population increments. The possibility that negative effects on the climate can be accused on a bigger, more established population may likewise be unrealistic. According to Bill Gates, we don't always take into account the power and influence of the human mind. A bigger population implies more thoughts and development that will assist us with diminishing hurtful effects on the climate. Likewise, as we live more, we're more disposed to consider our future necessities and along these lines become all the more environmentally mindful. Expanded lifespans will change the family unit of the future. One result of living longer is that we would have more opportunity to shape connections and have youngsters. It's likely we would do this multiple times over, which would have fascinating implications. New fertility technology will empower ladies to have kids later, an illustration of which happened in 2008 when an Indian lady called Devi brought forth a solid youngster at 70 years old. Fertility technology is advancing quickly and will make late pregnancy safer and more normal. One outcome of this is that there will conceivably be a more extensive age hole between kin. Presently, there are only sometimes age contrasts of more than 20 years between kin. Notwithstanding, if we somehow happen to live to 150, which may not be that far away as per scientists, age contrasts of 40, or even 50 years could turn out to be genuinely ordinary. Another side effect of having kids later will be a rising number of maturing, bedraggled guardians, who might experience issues taking care of and playing with their children. Nonetheless, if science can improve our well-being and imperativeness even as we age, this may not be such a worry. Living longer could likewise prompt a more prominent assortment in our family structure. Until decently as of late, it was ordinary for a youngster to grow up without either of its organic guardians. Before, war, sickness, and passing in labor made remarriage with existing youngsters or adoption genuinely common. 
as we begin to live more and have more connections all through our lifetime, almost certainly, we'll return to these family connections based on social connections, between stepchildren, non-permanent parents, etc., instead of the natural ones that we experience today. Expanded lifespans will support the economy and make a more taut labor force. A few people break down the effect a bigger and more established population will have on the economy. Who will pay for all these elderly world's individuals and their benefits? Be that as it may, living longer may end up being a monetary favorable position. As indicated by business analysts David Bloom and David Canning, in the event that one nation has a future five years higher than another, at that point, any remaining components staying equivalent, the genuine pay per capita will rise 0.3 to 0.5% quicker in the better country. Why would that be? One explanation is that more drawn-out living outcomes in a labor force that is better taught, preparing for a more wholesome economy. Additionally, on the off chance that we live more, we experience more noteworthy advantages from higher wages. On the off chance that you labor for a very long time in the wake of contemplating, that implies 40 years of higher wages, yet on the off chance that you work 70 years subsequent to considering, you can appreciate those wages for a very long time. Additionally, when instructed individuals stay in work, the pool of taught laborers will widen as more graduates continue to stream into the work market. Economists Rodolfo Manueli and Ananth Sashadri have demonstrated that the distinction in monetary yield between nations is connected to changes in human resources, a general public's joined information and abilities, and instruction largely affects this. Worldwide investigations have demonstrated that the least fortunate nations have the most to acquire financially from expanded lifespan, as the potential for expanded riches and pay from lifespan is more prominent in these spots. For instance, the National Bureau of Economic Research distributed an investigation that demonstrated that somewhere in the range of 1965 and 1995, the government assistance gains because of expanded lifespan were 27% of GDP for Mexico versus only 5% for the far more well-off the United States. Carrying on with longer and better lives won't make us less strict, however will change our relationship with religion and spirituality. How might a reality where we carry on with extremely long lives and only from time to time experience sickness and passing change religion? What effect would lifespan have on spirituality? As we live more, the idea of the hereafter will begin to lose its worth. All the significant world religions highlight some sort of the hereafter. Truth be told, anthropologist Ernest Becker famously said that without death, religion would not exist. Confidence in existence in the wake of death mollifies numerous individuals' tension and is an extraordinary fascination of numerous beliefs. Yet as science enables us to live longer, so too will the major religions concerned need to be attracted to other things in order to be relevant. Living longer will give us more opportunity to consider the unavoidable issues throughout everyday life and account for new kinds of spirituality. Livia Cohn, strict examinations educator at Boston University and a specialist on Deoism, predicts that the topic of how to occupy our time and coordinate our lives will turn out to be progressively significant as we draw nearer to what in particular was at one time our definitive objective, eternality. Some sort of otherworldly direction might have the option to assist us with exploring our lives. The futurist Ray Kurzweil demands another sort of religion. Kurzweil is an individual from developing some of the time known as transhumanism, which holds that we're going to a point, or singularity, where science and innovation will empower us to overshadow the restrictions of our science. In his book The Singularity is Near, Kurzweil considers the requirement for another religion dependent on love for human cognizance and information. As we witness more sensational changes to human existence with new innovation, this development is probably going to obtain force. Future leaders, legislators, and other inspiring individuals should figure out how to successfully advance lifespan. Likewise, with any development, the development for lifespan requires representatives and representatives to proceed to raise and pull in financing. There are numerous approaches to help this reason. Multiplying the thought or MIM that solid life expansion is feasible and worth putting resources into will earn backing and add to public comprehension of the issue. One illustration of this is Oprah Winfrey's shows on lifespan, and her help for specialists like Mehmet Oz, who have gotten persuasive by offering guidance on how we can live better lives. Biology has become the new development zone for designing as researchers try different things with qualities, discovering approaches to make cells gleam or even smell like bananas. This flood isn't not normal for the beginnings of the PC upheaval, besides as opposed to hacking hardware, presently we can hack qualities. Movers and shakers in the innovation business, for example, 
Google's Larry Page and Microsoft Prime supporter Paul Allen are as of now acutely keen on biohacking. We can energize lifespan development through motivator prizes and interests in biohacking, expanding the odds of finding lifestyle choices longer and all the more strongly. The $10 million Archon Genomics Prize is designed for accelerating and lessening costs for genome sequencing. Physicist Stephen Hawking is one of its allies, as he accepts such prizes will prompt the treatment of genuine infections. So we can see there is gigantic potential here. However, to advance further, government officials and policymakers need to see how to advance new innovations and use the experiences and information we can acquire from biohacking. Final Summary The Main Message in This Book New advancements and progress in science are now giving us lifestyle choices any longer and better lives. As our life expectancies broaden, this will enormously affect society and the manner in which we approach our reality. Notwithstanding, mankind is adequately inventive and sufficiently able to manage this, and we shouldn't dread age, developing populace. You like what you hear? Check out other personal development or business books. This video was made possible by your support. It takes a very long time to make one of our videos, so thanks to your contributions on Patreon and watching our videos. We are slowly able to do more and more of them. If you want to help us out, check out the Patreon page. If you like the contents of this video, check out other books in the description and suggest what book we should cover next.